we received a grant from the Alberta Center for Child, Family, and Community Research to, to run the MILE program in Edmonton. Um, so we collaborated directly with the, the individuals that created the program. So they're, they're in all of our publications. Um, and then we have a team of researchers and my, my PhD student, Katrina, has been working on this for her master's and her PhD. But some of our remaining questions were, can we do MILE in a school or home setting? Because the kids here drove into the lab once a week for six weeks to do the study and really that's not that it's not an ecologically valid setting and that they're not usually learning in a laboratory setting and labs don't like they, they're not scary looking it's just basically a room but um we wanted to go to the kids um another thing we wanted to know if the mal program was effective without the parental involvement believe me don't get me wrong i think the parental involvement is very important but if you actually look at their research design it's hard to tell what led to the improvements in math. Was it the fact that the parents were working on the stuff at home, or was it the direct instruction that the child was getting in math? And then we also tested to see whether or not mild improved other cognitive areas. Because remember, it's focusing on working memory and executive functioning, all of these things. We wanted to see whether or not it improved those areas as well. So just to highlight what we've done. So this is the first study by Julie Cable and Claire Cole. So they had um, six one-hour sessions over six weeks. What we did is we did 10 half-an-hour sessions over six to eight weeks. So they got about two a week. And the reason we, we changed that um, is because we didn't have that parental component. So we thought if we did two sessions a week, we hoped there was less um, loss of information <coughs> over the, the next week. So that's what we did. So, so most kids had 10 sessions. Theirs was done in a laboratory setting, which isn't really um, a setting that kids are usually in. We did it in school or home. They had the parental involvement, we didn't have any. Another important thing that we did, which, which I, I like that we did, is um, they had a sham intervention. So basically they had a control group that just received basic educational supports, nothing new. Um, but in order to control for one-on-one -on -one time with the researcher, it's important that the other group also has the same amount of one-on-one -on -time, one time with the researcher because sometimes it's just the direct working with another person that, that can be helping, right? And that we know that that is helpful. So, and ethically, we didn't want to randomly assign kids to either get an amazing intervention or get nothing. Like, it just didn't feel right to us. So we thought, what can we do with the comparison group where we can still give them something and give them an intervention, but it has no overlap with math. Because if it, is, if it also affects math, then we're, gonna, we're not going to see any differences. So we thought, let's do a social skills intervention. And then we tested them before and after the, the six to eight weeks on math, also social skills, because we, we need to see if that changed, behavior, working memory, visual, spatial, and executive functions. Their sample was age three to 10. Ours was age four to 10. Um, we include kids with FASD as well as kids with prenatal alcohol exposure. So when I use the term PAE, that's referring to kids with prenatal alcohol exposure, but who maybe don't have a diagnosis. So after our six to eight weeks of our version of, of the MILE program, um, where we're doing it in the schools, we see a gain on the key math, a huge change. This is the number of Ross points that they're changing on, on the key math, on the alternate form and then very little change in social skills and that's really what we want to see. So sorry, this isn't a change in social skills, this is the social skills group, their change in the math score, okay? So this difference here is the most important thing here that, again, without the parental involvement, we're able to improve their math skills. Um, when we look at the different um, tests on the key math, you see basic operations measurement, there's a number of different things. We did the whole key math. We see most of the difference on basic operations, and that probably has to do with um, the MAL program is focusing a lot on those basic operations. And because we were dealing with a younger age group, they're you know they're doing the younger kids are doing less algebra and things like that, right? So um, we saw significant differences there and on geometry, but we do see differences on almost all of the other tests measured. Once we have more children in our sample, I imagine almost all of those will be bumped up to be significant. Um, right now, we're still looking at the changes in the um, other data, like executive functioning and working memory. We are seeing some changes. They're not significant yet, again, because we only have 17 children. So as we test more children, um, I think they will be. But we definitely have direct evidence that it's, the program is still improving math skills. So math difficulties in children with FASD and PED can be improved with a targeted intervention that is individualized. So it's developed for each individual child's needs that is little parental involvement. So even when the parents aren't working on these skills at home, 
us as researchers were able to um, directly change math skills, and that's how I feel that you as educators can also do the same. Um, it was very short term. They had really six hours, six to seven hours of this tutoring, and we saw huge changes, and one that was conducted in an ecologically valid setting, school or home. We train educators using a train the train the model to, to do these principles in their classroom. And that's all about knowledge translation. That's directly taking what we've learned from research to the classroom. We're going to teach you how to do it, and then we'll still measure the kids' success pre and post, and hopefully we can see benefits as well.